I'm Robin. I'm Dan. And we're the Ramblers. We're in downtown Billings, Montana, as we continue our journey through the rest of the state. We are on Lewis and Clark Trail. We are at Pompey's Pillar right. in Montana, which is a is. major site along the uh, Lewis and Clark Trail. Yeah, so we ended up upon Lewis and Clark Trail, and at this point, this is Clark's camp. Right. And at this point, Lewis and Clark had already gone west, and they split up and went two different directions. They were coming, coming back. back. They were trying to just explore, you know, get twice, twice, twice the much. bang for their buck. And since they already exploring knew Exploring the way bit. back. Right. So... Meriwether Lewis went one way, I believe uh, north. North, or and north. I think it's called the Moray or Marias River. Right, and William Clark stayed on the Yellowstone River with Saco, Sacagawea. Sacagawea and Charbonneau, and their little boy named Jean Baptiste, his Who, nickname was? Pompey. Uh, yeah, apparently William Clark really liked the kid, oh. and they called him Pompey, which means little dancing boy, and he liked him so much that when they came upon this sandstone Giant sandstone pillar he named it after the little boy Pompey he called it Pompey's Tower and it, when it got when things got edited it became Pompey's Pillar Ooh, we like the alliteration yeah and the spelling got put, so put let's an e ponder <laughs> Pompey's Pillar as we pause and promenade away <laughs> okay so we have York and we have William Clark. And we have, I don't know. And we have Sacagawea. And we have her son, Jean Baptiste, who Clark called Pompey. And then we've got whatever this one is the troublemaker. <laughs> and here are the kind of canoes they traveled in. They chop down large trees, yep. hollow them out, and make canoes. And they often lash together like that in two. Kind of like we do with our dinghies. Yep. When we're exploring the Great Lakes. That's right. With our cooler uh, the uncharted sunscreen. waters. What do you call that? Do an etching. Etching? They call it etching? Okay. So. Of William Clark's signature that he oh, this is put so on cool. the pillar. I should have, look at this, W, W Clark. He's got the date too. July 25th, 1806, on six. Oh, I love it. Perfect. Now we don't have to see it, we have it right here. In order to get up to where William Clark put his name and the date alongside some of the animal drawings and things that the Native Americans made, we have to make this long, arduous <laughs> climb up. Um, oh, oh, never mind. Well, this is not my favorite thing to see when I'm about to take a stairway. You can do it. If the snake can do it, I can do it. How you doing back there? Okay. We're getting there. It's warm. It is warm indeed. There it is. <laughs> William Clark, July 25th, 1806. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can see it now. Some of these markings were already here. I wish I could read some of the Native years. Americans. Yeah, so a lot of the, and the Clark put his signature right there. Markings in this particular area range from the early 1880s all the way up until 1948. And do they go all the way around? They do, yes. Okay. So when it, wherever you would uh, really think to put a signature or a marking, there is probably one there. So the markings uh, that William Clark encountered were largely from Native Americans, but the ones around it now are from his time forward until 
40s. Uh, some of them right over some of the Native American things though. So there's still some traces there, but uh, a lot of what's around his name there are, are even more recent than him. More contemporary. Here's some more carvings. I see 1901 uh, for sure. There's the Yellowstone River, which is a tributary to the Missouri River that Clark was surveying. Wow. Do you feel like Clark? I feel like a Clark bar. I kind of feel like Sacagawea. You do. Ah, you hesitated because you thought I was going to say it wrong, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Sacagawea. I've been practicing. This is a really cool spot here. Very cool. And I, you just kind of go, wow, what was he thinking of or what was he looking at? And he really surveyed everything. Right. 400 paces around the bottom. Right. And how and he uh, figured the height and he, yeah. Yeah. he, of course, you know, had a meticulous journal of, of that and everything else that he did right, right. along the way. So, much like our journaling, our video vlogs, yes, our blogging, Facebook, Instagram. Highly, Facebook. highly accurate and historically correct. Finding new adventures. <laughs> Yes, things absolutely. that no one has ever done before. Yeah, like this. Like I never, this. I never yep. heard of this. Nope, this <laughs> we, is true. We, we never heard of this place until a couple years ago. And I think we're the first ones here. The ago. boardwalk just happened to be. I think uh, Lewis, not Lewis, Clark made this. He had his men. He had yeah. he had York but, lead a party of guys to make but this. But this is uh, where he traversed down the river to the Mississippi, where he met up with Meriwether. We should have named our children Meriwether. And William or Mary, Lewis and Clark. I think they are eternally grateful that they did. We did not. That would have been a fun thing. All righty. So from the Lewis and Clark Trail, and from Pompey's Pillar. Pompey's Pillar. We say adieu. And somewhere in Montana, west of Billings. Yes, west of Billings, Montana, the Big Sky State. That is sky is quite big here. It is big. It's very big. I've noticed that. It's an oversized sky. It's bigger than usual. It's XXXL. We could use some extra. Take it with us. Yeah, I'm sure. Maybe they have in the gift shop. Let's go buy some sky. Let's do that. As it's kind of indicated now in modern times, you can see there's a river, there's an old railroad bridge, and there's a road. Right. This place has always been kind of a crossroads yes. for travel, for wildlife, and everything else, including what? Robin? Well, Right across there, and then there are hills. Just on, then, just on the other side of that bridge there, yeah, basically. Then known as Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong's troops were there. He and his men of the Yellowstone Expedition were all camped there. And here's a picture. Would that be George Armstrong Custer, by any chance? As opposed to, what did I say? George Armstrong. <laughs> George, yeah, I just we go by middle and first and middle names. G.A. <laughs> Custer, not Custard. Custer. <laughs> Uh, G.A. Custer, right. But he was camped right over there. And this is not too far from another place that was significant in his life. Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument. We're at Custard's Battlefield, Little Bighorn, and this was the license plate next to us. Well, the first thing you see when you come into the parking lot for the Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument is this large cemetery. And I said, well, no, this is far too many graves to be just Custer's and his men. And in fact, this has a national cemetery that was used until 1978 when it got full. So there are uh, veterans all the way up to the Vietnam War buried here. The uh, Custer and his people were buried in a mass grave out by the battlefield. One thing that always had me fascinated with the whole George Custer thing is because that is my birthday, June 25, and it's off by just a couple years, not 1876. This is a ravine where a lot of the battle took place at Little Bighorn. Um, the white markers are where they found bodies. Yes. And who fought here? Uh, Chief Crazy Horse led the battle right along down into the gully there. Uh, soldiers on one side, 7th Cavalry, and the tribes on the other, Native Americans. The, Ameri the uh, soldiers were led by Miles Keough. Yep. Over on the other side of the rise here, besides the white markers for the soldiers, there are some browner markers. Those are for Cheyenne warriors. 
a major portion of battle took place here before the big battle. Uh, they tried to route the Indian encampment before anything started. It, it didn't go well. I knew the topography would be kind of like this, but I didn't think it would be spread out as much as it is over such a it's, large area. It's very wide. And then those mountains over there are 14 miles away, and that's where the Indian scouts were noticing that, hey, we're going to be outnumbered 14 miles away, and they still come down in here. One thing we haven't actually mentioned no. is how the place got its name. That oh. river down there that they're crossing and fighting over is the Little Bighorn River. This particular memorial here is to a one of the Indian warriors. He rushed the soldiers and was killed at the bottom of the slope within a few yards of the line. Right here on this hill, there's the, the ravine, the deep ravine they came up. This was the place of Custer's last stand. On this hill, his body and nine others were found here in this vicinity along with several others. Right here, Custer's last stand. The remains of 220 soldiers scattered over the battlefield. Here are all their names. There's the graveyard. And there's one that looks a little different, which might be right here. Yep, there it is, right there. Oh, Custer. These are Cheyenne burial sites. We passed one, here looks like another. Okay, Dan, we're heading across Montana to our campground, and what do you notice about the landscape? You can see, like, forever in all directions. It is what they call big sky. Way out in the distance are mountains. Yeah, there's mountains in every direction, until eventually. It'll look a long way before you see them. <laughs> oh, yeah, we are, we're on a major highway in Montana, and we might have seen, like, three or four cars. It's just a little after rush hour. We're on I-94. Yeah, so you see Montana is not super heavily populated. From somewhere in the middle of Montana. At sunset. We're the Ramblers. here they, so you can welcome to try them out if you want to see what they wore in the William and Clark Lewis and Clark expedition and of course Robin has to do it because she has to do everything cute <laughs>